Hello everyone and welcome back to Elden Ring. This is part 5. Last time we took on Stormvale Castle, defeating Margit the Fell Omen and also Godric the Grafted, which was just like, oh man, <laughs> so cool. Uh, we got given a great rune and granted an audience with the two fingers itself, an actual hand with two fingers, bizarre stuff, definitely. Uh, but just so, so cool. Uh, and today, we're going to explore Limgrave. We're going to flesh out this area a little more. We're going to see if we can find some map for the south region. We're just going to go off the beaten path. And I hope you guys will in enjoy just hanging out with me as we traverse the lands between, you know? Um, it's definitely a different way to play a FromSoft game than we have before, where traditionally you kind of go area by area and you clear it out and you fight bosses and take in story and all that kind of stuff. This is obviously a lot more of an open, explorative experience where you can pick a direction and, and run in it. And I do want to include as much as possible in the playthrough of my gameplay and, and showing stuff. Uh, I think I'll, I'll cut out areas where we, you know, just retread the same ground. Like if I'm running through like an area that we've explored quite thoroughly already, I might not, you know, I'll, I'll take it out if we're just running through and show my, you know, like my discoveries and stuff. But for the most part, I feel like you guys have might also appreciate it being played the same way that like you guys are doing it when you're just hanging out. You're just running around and seeing what you can find, and I don't mind if you guys in, in those moments are playing along with me, or, you know, watching it through while you play the game yourself, or you just want to see what I can find, or you just want to have the game on in the background while I uh, while I play, but obviously I'm working really hard to see how I can make this the, the best experience for all of us to, to play through. Um, and it's just very interesting to get our head around playing like a an open world from soft game and and how we uh, and how we showcase that as a uh, as a let's play experience you know wow look at this that thing was far too heavy to be called a sword there's text on it godric the golden Humiliated, having tasted defeat by the blade of Maquella, now on his knees, begging for mercy. Wow. I just love how there's this, like, stuff like this just, you know, scattered and littered throughout the world, you know? It's probably a good idea for the most part to use our horse for exploration, but also we can't really stealth the ho with the horse, do we, if we want to go in here. And I think he's seen us. Yep. <laughs> oh god, I, me I meant to run! <laughs> I meant to run, I just stood there and let it happen. Oh my god. We get fucking murdered by this guy right off the bat. Okay. Oh! Hang on a minute. I figure... Okay. That's how guard counter works. Oh! It's with... Okay, it's with R2. Can you not interrupt this fucking fight? Respect the 1v1, you dickheads! What the fuck? Respect the 1v1, you assholes! Yeah, <laughs> fuck's sake. Um, guard counter is cool, so it does like that cool, like, shing ability. Um, so it's actually like triggered. That's nice. I appreciate that. Fucking dudes on horseback just coming in. I love how, like, only moments ago I was like, guys, we're gonna have, like, a chill... Just, like, a chill run through the lands between. Let's just explore and take it in. And I'm like, fuck you, horseman! <laughs> Piece of shit. Alright, guard counter is... I uh, figured it out now, because I think when I was... When we were first given it, I was trying to do the light attack. But it triggers on the heavy attack. There you go. All right, horse man, let's fight now that you're out here. Come on. Nice, okay. Gotcha. 
Oh. I see. It works when it works. Oh. <laughs> Just swatted me out the air. And he's just like, hello, it's me. Get out of here. Judging by uh, a lot of your reactions to like the first episode of of Elden Ring as well, when I when I posted that, a lot of you seem to be having the like a similar sort of approach to this game uh, that I have, which is pick a direction and run with it and get very, very lost. And I love that. It's so good. Oh, so he's faster than that guard counter. And I know that a lot of people uh, that I've been that I've been talking with about their experience with the game so far have also pretty much done the same thing, which is Stormdale Castle? What's that? I'm going elsewhere. I'm going wherever... I'm going in the complete opposite direction. <laughs> and it makes so much sense to do so. Because you just want to take in this beautiful world. And see what kind of secrets you can find, of which there's definitely going to be a lot of them. You just sleep in there, bud. Armorer's Cookbook, number one. Nice. Um, where do we find the cookbook information? Obviously not this way. Uh, there it is. Armorer's Cookbook. A record of crafting techniques left by an armorer who served the great General Radan contains knowledge of dealing with rot, the application of fire in particular. That's cool. Acquire the knowledge to craft the following. Fire grease, drawstring fire grease, and fireproof dried liver. These dead NPCs, like dead dead people are so interesting as well. They're all wearing like little crowns. Keep in mind as well, something that we've learned in previous episodes, all these ruins that we're seeing fell from the sky. Let's keep that in mind. That's pretty crazy. Right, you are an enemy. For a second I couldn't even target you. I was like, are you going to be an NPC in here? Get out of here. Alright, we've defeated a group, therefore we got our flask back. Here's the thing, I'm not sure whether it's better for us to just explore on horseback, or whether for us to just go for a walk so we have a bit more control over if we want to stealth into a situation. We've got a bunch of minor Erd trees around the way as well. We've only discovered one so far down south that we've actually checked out. Ooh, side of grace. Hello. Touch grace. Oh, and we've got a little point for... Uh, for our steed torrent to jump on. Murkwater Coast. Oh, actually, I think I might have enough to level up, actually. Let's have a look. No, oh, nope, almost. I can hear one of those scarabs. I wonder if we can jump down there and avoid taking full damage if we land in the the wind. Oh, yes, you can make that. Nice. It's very curious to see what you can and can't make. Yes. All right. Where's that treasure scout? Because I can hear it. There you are. Nice. Oh! Somber smithing stone. Uh, there's explosive ones. <laughs> there's ones that blow up. Another site of lost grace. Hello. Ooh, 
Whoa. What's going on here? What if this is a fucking painted world, dude? Are we about to get sucked into a painting? Are they gonna do that shit to us? Where are we? What is this? Artist Shack. Is the artist here? Oh, no way. This is a magical painting. <laughs> and this is the artist. <laughs> the artist is currently out. Maybe he's pondering his painting. Are we about to get sucked into a painted world right now? We know how this works. Oh. Homing Instinct Painting. What's that? Oh, it's a uh, info. Work of a wandering artist, reminiscence of a painting titled Homing Instinct. This painter is said to have captured the landscape seen during the last moments of those welcomed into death's embrace. The soul of the painter and vestiges of the dead's last moments can be discovered by visiting the location depicted even now. Ah, an artist. Okay, an artist is painting locations in the world for us to find and explore. All right, I'm going to start taking photos of these paintings on my phone. So that's underneath a bridge. So it could be this bridge. Ah, oh, hang on. Could be with that in mind. Dude, when the when when it starts to rain, like no kidding, man. When it starts to rain, it's just it feels so good. There's just like a feeling of the environment and weather and like time of day shift in this game, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's like any time a game has a day and night and a weather cycle, I instantly fall so in love because I love to get immersed in a game like that. It's so good. I'm hoping that they're, because, you know, it's quite windy near Stormvale and all that like Storm Hill and stuff, but I would love like a full on raging thunderstorm as well. We'll keep that painting in mind when we're hanging around around the, the bridges. We'll look for a collection of graves. But I expect that we'll find more more paintings along the way. I feel like you should probably expect a lot of episodes like this as well, where we might get into some fights and we may encounter some bosses, but it might not be a guarantee because instead we, we might just really just explore uh, and see what we can discover, you know? It's one of the, the really beautiful things about this game and something that just completely blows me away is the, again, like the verticality. Like the map is already huge, but it's just like you can also, it's also like horizontally and vertically huge. If it was up to me, I would barely make no progress, and I would just walk through the map most of the time. <laughs> and just do nothing, but just walk ever so slowly. Which is why I expect this will probably end up being quite a long playthrough as we uh, as we seek to do as as much as possible. But also, just do not be surprised if we we save a lot of that. Discovery for a for a new game plus. We'll have to we'll have to see what we can discover out on our first run. What are you guys looking for? Oh shit! Oh god! Never underestimate a hollow with a torch. Let me tell you. Where are we at the moment? Side of Lost Grace over here. I love how there's like the light pointing towards them, so it makes it like a lot harder to to miss them. 
And there's so many there's so many points as well to fast travel to. It makes this makes this such a such a dream. Oh, the Mistwood. All right, here we are. The Mistwood outskirts. We need to get our wondrous physic thing here. Remains in the third church north of the Mistwood. So where we are now. Mistwood outskirts. So it could be around, if this is the outskirts, it could be around here somewhere. Let's find this because we've found some items that go with the flask, but we haven't found the flask itself. So we're looking for a church. This game needs a photo mode as well. I don't know if you guys just think that that's like. Just like a dumb gimmick, a photo mode, but a good photo mode, you know, is uh, is so appreciated. And and Sekiro would have would have uh, been great with that too. And Bloodborne. Hello. Is anybody there? Hello. Who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height? Kenneth Height. To the true order and celebrated repudiator of the false. Oh, Ertree. Grant me sucker! Oh, he's up there. What the fuck? Hi, another NPC. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height. Kenneth Sold Height. To the true order and celebrated repudiator of the false. Oh, Ertree. Grant me sucker! Oh shit, I'm not being attacked by something. Fuck, hold on. I'm writing down an NPC's Hello? name. Is anybody there? Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height. Servant to the true order and celebrated repudiator of the false. No. Oh, grant me sucker. Guys, please, let me talk to this guy. Ah, you've come to lend me your aid, have you? Well, that's... That's very kind, but, um... No. No, the help is very much appreciated. Even from a tarnished. Despite appearances, nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. You might have heard of me. Kenneth Height. Next in line Next is the line rightful is ruler? The ruler of Limgrave. Young tarnished. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it, a fool, and plumb mad to boot. Simply obsessed with blood. Okay, we're taking back a fort. Um, and just, if you know, like, I'll just be writing shit down, by the way. Like, that's, that's what we're, that's what we're doing. I would highly recommend. Maybe even on a phone. It's probably easier to type shit. Than it is to write it, but pen and paper, baby. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? <laughs> My fort lies to the south, beyond the mistwood. Take it back for me. Oh, I see. You wish to know the reward? Fret not. The great Kenneth Height is known for his considerable largess. Considerable large ass. <laughs> upon the dawn of my fort's retrieval. Kenneth Height has a considerably large ass. Yes. Now, allow me to furnish you with a little advice. I would take great care to avoid Godric's tarnished hunts were I in your shoes. That depraved lot are obsessed with sacrificing tarnished like you for the sake of grafting. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped-up country bumpkin. <laughs> Lord, oh, don't make me laugh. First, he hid himself amongst the women folk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots, rather than <laughs> like a man. <laughs> Has he no shame? The big girl's blouse? And to think, he's the blood of Godfrey, last of the golden lineage. Though you almost wouldn't know it to look at him. Yeah. I almost feel sorry for the chap the more I think of it. Oh dude, this dude's dialogue is so good. <laughs> He's just trash talking, trash talking Godric so hard. 
What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? Okay, so we're taking back his fort. Uh, south of Mistwood. Um, I don't know where exactly, so I'm just gonna put a marker here of like a fort, and we'll head in that. We'll just we'll just make a mark of it so we we remember that there's something south of the Mistwood, because we'll, we'll head there. We are looking for this church, however. What the fuck is going on over there? What is that? We got like dead tree roots, but with something on top of it. Honestly, best idea for them to give you the telescope so early, just at like a vendor. At Carle. Kenneth Height, best NPC. <laughs> Ooh, this looks like a church. This looks like this could be the ruins of a church. We might find our flask here. Best thing to do is just uh, find, find yourself a nice tall piece of ruin and go off and explore. Let's ride in the direction of this church. Oh, hello big boy. Another one of these big guys. Oh, here's a side of Lost Grace. Am I being attacked by this boar? I am. So you have chosen death! <laughs> I'm like, is this... Is this boar really attacking me right now? Okay. Alright, we've got Grace. Ooh, yep. Third Church of Marica. There you go. That will be our item then. This will be our wondrous physic. Let's pick it up. Talk to Melina. So, this has happened... This happened in the other church down south that Melina was here. So I'm, I was wondering whether there's specific grace points or whether it's after a certain amount of time has passed. It looks like it might be tied to Marika. Let's talk to Melina. Melina and Marika. Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? I'm interested. Very well. In Marika's own words, my lord, and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. Well, perhaps that might serve you in lieu of a maiden's guidance. Hmm. Melina, it's raining. Put your hood up. You're going to get your beautiful hair wet. And then she fades away. Right, I guess this is our flask. Here it is. Flask of wondrous physic. You can find crystal tears at the bases of minor erd trees and elsewhere throughout the lands between. At Sites of Grace, you can mix two crystal tears in the Flask of Wondrous Physic. This will allow you to create elixirs with various custom effects. We have a crimson crystal tear and the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Okay. So it's got one drink, like one use. Let's take a look. A relic of the Physic Chemists, Priests of the Erd Tree. Harness... Harnesses the power of crystal tears, which only form after the passage of many moons. Various special effects are bestowed upon the drinker, dependent on the specific mixture of crystal tears. Rest at a side of grace to replenish. Basins are placed at the feet of minor erd trees throughout the lands between in order to collect their crystallized tears. Okay, now we have a... Um, a crimson, and that one's a crimson burst. Restores half of one's maximum HP. Gradually restores one's HP over time. So we can put two in there. So this one provides damage negation. Boosting faith. Boosting strength. So let's have a look. Let's rest at our side of grace. Mix wondrous physic. With this menu you can mix two crystal tears. 
Sorry, Crystal Tears. It's going to be hard. English language. Words being the same. Crystal Tears in the Flask of Wondrous Physic. So, I believe there's one that's a temporary use, right? One of these... I think it might be the Opaline one. One of these said it's like a temporary one. I've already forgotten the description. Hold on. This effect only occurs once and will expire after a certain duration. So the damage negation one is temporary. These ones are temporary, but I think that it's a temporary boost that will not last once. Like as long as you re replenish the flask, it should be okay. So I'm thinking we should go for one that um, restores half of HP and boosting strength. Otherwise we could go for a full health one, but I'm thinking... Strength and Crimson is the one that we'll go for here. We'll mix them together. So you get two effects in one. Crimson and Strength. Cool. And it's just a one-time use. Ah, and another Sacred Tear. So there will be... There must be... Well, this is the third church, but we don't know whether there's more than three. We, all we know at the moment is there's at least three. Oh wow, look at the light coming in. The time of day change. I mean, there's no light that I can really see, but... <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's upgrade our flask. Increase amount replenished using a sacred tier. Perfect. Flask of Crimson Tears plus two, baby. Alright, so we found our church. So at this current point in time, uh, all of our information, these two, we've done. The Homie Instinct painting, we have not done. Um, I wonder if we should check in with Kale and see if he has any further information for us now before we before we go south of the of the mistwood to go to this fort. Oh, I forget that I don't need to be resting <laughs> at a grace point to travel. Oh, we're like almost at a halfway point to to Caleb. Ugh, I don't want to go back there yet. <laughs> uh, church of Ella. So this is another church, but this is not a church of America, a church of Ella instead this way tarnished may i have a word whoa are you asleep right now whoa kale and the steed are like asleep and there's a mysterious fog surrounding you. Whoa. Oh, this is our woman from one of the earlier trailers that was narrating the story. Yep, look at you. With your two... The whole eye thing is really interesting. So Melina is missing an eye and has like a tattoo above it. This one, two eyes, but missing the one in the middle that joins their two heads. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the Witch Renna. The Witch Renna. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? to call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. Wow, and four arms. I can call the spectral steed. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee by Torrent's former master. Torrent's former master? Oh, that's the spirit calling bell. That I was like, how are we going to summon these spirits? And like, you need a spirit calling bell. I'm like, oh, I don't know where that is, but sure. <laughs> They may as well just, instead of calling her Witch Renner, just call her Big Hat Renner instead. Much easier. Lone Wolf Ashes. Tis a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. 
from ash and return to the earth tree the spirits will obey thine command but briefly as they recall battles past now it is thine to do with as thou wishest cool so cool okay so we got lone wolf ashes Spirits of wolves chased from their pack, they later encountered a nameless tarnished who welcomed them as hunting companions. The wolf spirits overwhelm enemies with their agility, aiding the summoner in combat. Cool, now that we have the bell, we should definitely look at using this. Where is the bell, however? Let's see. There it is. Spirit Calling Bell, a bell capable of summoning various spirits from Ashen Remains. It usually requires FP to use. Usually. Spirits can only be summoned in the vicinity of a rebirth monument. When summoning is possible, the monument icon will be visible on the left side of the screen. Only one type of spirit may be summoned at once, and none may be summoned during multiplayer. So it's like a key item in here. Interesting. All right. Forgive mine intrusion, tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder, before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? she leaves. She says that she doubt that we'll see her again. Ah, now Kale's awake. Interesting. Her presence almost, like, puts people to sleep. Maybe she's, like, only able to, like, speak to someone that she chooses. Wait. Weren't you... Well, you're back. Care to buy something? Talk. There are others of my people who yet survive in these lands. If the mood takes you when you meet one, then offer them some trade, won't you? My people, wanderers all have long been spurned by the grace of gold, which is why we cannot settle, but instead are forced into this pitiful, unceasing journey. But thanks to that, things are not so different for us now. Though the Elden Ring is shattered, I think this makes us kindred spirits of sorts. Your people, the Tarnished, and mine. Wow. So there are other merchants that are the same type of, like, his people. We've met one already. Perhaps you don't need to hear this, but see that no harm comes to my kin. We have a saying, we wanderers. Lament not your solitude. Expect no sympathy, no regard, nothing but... If anyone dares harm us, show them no mercy. That is our code, so to speak. Just the way we are. Deeply unforgiving. The merchant code. All right, protect them at all costs. Okay. I might buy these cracked pots now, because... The cracked pots are like, they're just an empty vessel, so you just have like an infinite use of them, which is really cool. So I think it's a good idea just to like, have them for when we want to make throwables. Um, I also think invigorating cured meat, white cured meat, and a glowstone, holy water, and roped holy water pots is, uh, could be an interesting one to get as well. He hasn't updated to get any more of these, which is what I was curious about. May as well buy these, as they're available. Goodbye. Nice to do business. Okay, so that's what Kale's got for us. Still need more smithing stones. <laughs> so that was an interesting revisit. Not what I expected, coming back in just to chat with Kale. We got an unexpected meeting with Witch Renner. And god, it's been such a good idea for me to be writing down characters' names as I encounter them, because I am quite bad at remembering names at the best of times. So, having something to 
come back to is very useful. While we're here uh, in this land, let's speak to Vare as well. Is that just the goats making these noises? Hang on, someone is snoring. Is someone snoring? Oh no, someone's screaming. I'm hearing both sc screaming and snoring. Like, I swear to god. Oh, I can't wield a torch. I can't wield the torch while I'm on horseback. Hold on. Unless, can I put it in this hand? Yes, you can wield a torch on horseback. Oh, it's not the... it's not the stake, is it? They look very dead. Hmm. I guess that that must be these bodies up here that are making this the screaming and the and the snoring. <laughs> I thought there might have been like an NPC just fucking snoozing. I guess this is what nighttime is like. Which, by the way, is gorgeous. Having, like, all of, like, pieces of, almost like, it looks like pieces of the Erd tree just flying through the, the sky. Is it the goats? Are the goats making the noise? I can't tell. I'm so confused. Oh, shit. Vare's gone. Vare's moved on. I keep accidentally doing the telescope instead of dismounting. Find yourself maidenless? Off to Lernia with you then. Seek the Rose Church west of the Gate Town. Oh, he's left us a message. Hold on. Okay. Vare has left us a message that says... Um, find yourself with, uh, with no bitches? <laughs> find yourself with no bitches? Go to Leonia. Uh, let me write that down. So go to Leonia. Rose Church. West of the Gate Town. West of Gate Town. I'm gonna need, like, big book just to write all of my locations in and all my characters. So there's another church, a rose church west of Gate Town. I guess that might be where he is. Or he might be headed in that direction. Bravo gesture. And a bravo gesture. So Vare's location has updated. Um, ooh. I remember that there's one of those imp statues in there. Maybe we could check that out at some point as well. Especially this. I'm so curious about this. Because I don't think you can swim in this game. It's not Sekiro, unfortunately. You know what's fucking crazy about this is we've like I haven't <laughs> I haven't really explored much yet, and we've come back here, and there's just a whole bunch more yet again to just find and uncover, and NPCs like NPCs leaving you notes as well when they move on is quite a nice touch. You could just honestly stay in this one section of Limgrave and just uncover all of the secrets and then go head somewhere new and then as soon as you've 
As soon as you've gone somewhere new, then come back to Limgrave to see if there's any changes. I th yeah, I think all of these screams that we're hearing... The horrifying screams that we're hearing are the bodies strung up on the stakes. Holy shit, that's terrifying listening to that. That is terrifying listening to that. Oh, that, this is our artist thing. Oh shit, this is the painting. Oh, we just stumbled right across it. <laughs> we just ran right to the... Okay, I thought it was going to be over there with the bridge. That was the... That was the painter. An incantation scarab. Okay, so we find paintings and we find items as a result. An incantation scarab. What is that? So many items. Oh, it's a... It's a headpiece. Golden scarab worn directly on the head. These scarabs roll clumps of incantations during their labors. Slightly reduces the FP cost of incantations, but increases damage taken. As a scarab approaches death, it abandons its rolled treasure and stretches its wings wide for the long journey to its home nest. It's a headpiece. Oh my god, it's huge! Oh! <laughs> oh! It's like we just put its mouth, like, stretch its mouth open. We're just wearing a fucking scarab. Oh, that's disgusting. We just cut open its body and just went, yeah, sure. Bruh. <laughs> Fashion. Fashion, baby. Look at me. I'm a knight. I'm a knight in armor. I fucking hate this helmet. <laughs> like, look at where the, the eye slot doesn't make sense. It's perfect. Just ruined sentinel helmet. Alright. We're going to be on the lookout to look for those paintings for sure. That was awesome. Give me your turtle meat. Turtle meat. Alright, we've been to these ruins before because this is where that teleporting trap is. And we never want to do that again. <laughs> Instead, I am engaged in combat. Loosely. With a dragonfly. Come on, let me fly swat you. Oh, I fucking hate these things. You're making a joke out of me. Alright, I'm leaving. So, walking around at night is terrifying. Just those noises are something else. I wonder if there's any, like, changes to environment or enemy behavior at night. Like, if different things come out at night or in different weather conditions. Avoid crabs. I don't want to... I don't want anything to do with crabs. Uh, where are we? Let's check down here, because this is the Murkwater... Okay, so that's the Murkwater coast. I was looking to find a way to jump down here before, so now that we're here, we may as well. What's that? I actually thought uh, that those were bodies just hanging, but no, they're actually enemies to come down and kill me. Holy shit. Ah! Oh no, they're coming back to life. Okay. Is this a nighttime thing? I don't think we were at that church at night. And they still came back. How do we permanently put down skeleton enemies? Oh! Let me get out of here. Dude, there's just something so beautiful about, like, a samurai riding this steed. Oh, I got automatically kicked off. That means something important is nearby. That's also a really good thing to do, by the way. Ah, uh, here we go. Is if you're exploring... Oh, no, it's because there's an invader. Invaded by Bloody Finger. Oh, God. 
Bloody Finger Nerigus. Okay, you got anything else? Whoa! Okay! Okay! He does have something else. Bloody Finger Hunter Euro was summoned. Bloody Finger. The end is nigh. For you. Oh my god, I've got a friend? What the fuck? I've got a friend! Dude, someone came to my aid? What? This is like a story point. I got an NPC coming to my aid. He's got a cool hat. His voice sounded so cool. Bloody Finger Nerigus has died. Reduvia, a weapon. Oh, that's actually probably a good thing to, to point out, is when you get a new item, it obviously shows the category um, that it was. So we got a weapon. Whoa! Jagged dagger with a distinctive curved blade used by the noble servants of the Lord of Blood. This dagger rips the flesh as it enters, inflicting blood loss with sickening efficacy. Uh, a proud testament to the success of its vicious design, this weapon is perpetually coated in blood. Unique skill, Reduvia Blood Blade. Slash with the wicked dagger, transforming its never drying blood stains into airborne blood blades that cause hemorrhaging, can be fired in rapid succession. Wow. Okay, you need arcane. You need 13 arcane to wield a blood blade. And then that dude that helped us just disappeared. He just. I didn't get to see what his name was as it popped up on screen. I thought that we were getting kicked off the horse because of this down here, but it turns out we were getting invaded. You should be able to still be on horseback when you get invaded, right? So I'm going to assume that we got kicked off the horse for this, but then we got invaded at the same time. I can't believe someone came to our aid as well, like it was a scripted encounter. That's awesome. I want to find that person and figure out what he's all about. Wield. I'll leave it for now. I hope we can get like an item like those those people had in those crystal caves where they had like a light source on their belt instead of having to wield a torch, similar to like how Bloodborne has the lantern. Murkwater Cave. Dude, we're finding so much cool stuff. Like what the hell? Lost Grace discovered. This just, like, we've barely even, like, explored places. This is just insane. We're just walking around, like, areas that we've, uh, you know. We haven't even gone anywhere else yet. There's so many secrets to discover just in Limgrave itself. The summoning pool is now functional. The lighting in this game is so perfect. Oh. oh! What the fuck? Oh! Oh! Oh god. Oh god. Oh shit! Dude, that bell. Oh, fuck that fucking bell! Oh my god, I should have been more observant of the bells. They're all over the place. There's so many bells just sitting on the... on the ground. High woman gloves. Oh, it's like a little trap thing. Oh, that's so cool. That's what you get for not being more observant. So we're in Murkwater Cave is a dungeon right now because we can't teleport out. Oh god. 
Okay. That way leads to a fog wall. Let's go down this way. God, this game is so perfect, man. Oh, okay. Watch this be a teleporting trap. <laughs> Don't do it. Thank you. Oh. Mushroom. Just a mushroom. God, I'm so scared of chests now. There's, like, I, I would take a mimic any day now. <laughs> Instead of getting teleported to a random location. Holy shit. Alright. Let's equip our shield. Traverse the mist. Okay. Because it seems to be a trend in the modern, like the recent Souls games that in Dark Souls 1 it didn't used to be a mist wall being a boss, but like it quickly moved on to a mist wall meaning boss. We're locked in here. There's a boss in here. I don't trust that chest. I don't trust the chest. It's going to trigger an encounter. It's there. It's our only choice. I think it's our only choice. Ah, oh, here we go. There's a ledge up there. Watch this be like a giant fucking cave spider or some shit that's going to just like jump out of there. There you go. All right, we've been observant. Now let's fall for the trap. I sense a trap. What's our next move? Spring the trap. Well, well, well. Thought you'd just help yourself to a man's personal belongings, huh? You no fucking way! No fucking way! Cough up your coin. All of it. No fucking way! Patches is a boss fight! No fucking way! Dude, he's in the game! Patches is in the game! And he's a fucking boss, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, no! He's got like, fucking rot breasts, he's got stinky breasts. Oh my god. Wait, wait, please! I, I surrender! White flag and all! Oh, no way. You're going to trick me. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Finally come round, have you? <laughs> I knew you would. You're a man of reason. Through and through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And he's doing the Patches squat. Okay. See, I... I was like, I wonder if Patches is going to be in this game. We did some sort of speculation where I was like, is he going to be in his human form, like in Dark Souls? Or is he going to be something else? Like, how we've encountered him in uh, in another thing. Try not to, I'm trying not to spoil. Because I know there are people who haven't played all of the FromSoft games. If you know, you know what I'm talking about. But he's doing his Patches squat. Ah. Well, what do you know? You're tarnished, like me. Tarnished, huh? Did I get that wrong? I took you for a demi-human or some such. <laughs> but an innocent mistake, I assure you. Well, water under the bridge. Now we're squared up. How about we play nice from now on? He literally has his Dark Souls 3 personality. Like, no, sorry, not just Dark Souls 3. He has his Dark Souls 1 and 3 personality. He's exactly the same as, as Dark Souls patches. Forgive and forget, as we always do with this bumbling fool, conniving patches. A true man of reason. Just what I like about you. I'm Patches. Patches the Untethered. Patches the Untethered. Like you, only free-spirited. Nomadic, you might say. Only for now, those retired soldiers turned bandits. Oh, they're paying for my gruel. In exchange for my, well, showing them the ropes. But honestly, this looting racket is bloody terrifying. Frankly, I'm ready to wash my hands clean. Maybe set up a legitimate shop. So don't be a stranger. I'll be ready to wheel and deal come next time. 
<laughs> Gavlan wheel, Gavlan deal. <laughs> Dude. Patches was not in Dark Souls 2. Is that confirmation that Patches is Gavlan in Dark Souls 2? Because he's also a merchant that does that does selling of, of wares? Miyazaki! Don't forget to pop back for another visit, friend. Okay. Are we ready to wheel and deal? Come next time. Okay, so Patches is going to be our merchant, so we'll have to come back here later. For some wheeling and dealing. God, I love that he's like a joke fight. You just fight him and he's like, Don't kill me! We got some... We got some... Uh, cloth. We got a cloth garb. It's a trap chest in, in that it's just crap. <laughs> Clothing made of coarse material commonly worn in the lands between. Uh, we got the High Women gauntlets. I didn't read those. Former foot soldiers who have turned to banditry, which I guess is what he was just talking about. Trousers made of coarse material with thongs. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so we found a Patches dungeon. Uh, Murkwater Cave. I don't think we're going to forget this anytime soon, but let's put a marker on this that it's a person. So we'll put a person on Murkwater Cave. So we, that's just a reminder that he's here. I doubt we'll forget it because it's Patches. Isn't it Patches the Unbroken in Dark Souls? And now he's called Patches the Untethered. <laughs> Uh, I love how markers show up on the compass as well when you're in the world. That's a, that's a neat touch, so it's not just limited to the map. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Is this just a dead end? It is not a dead end. Oh, it's our guy! It's the dude that we just fought against. Unmistakable hat. Just joining the fray. Tarnished. What a cool voice. You fought Nereus and survived. Nereus. That alone deserves commendation. I'm Yura. Yura. Hunter of bloody fingers. Tarnished. Held in thrall by cessblood. Zealots. Who stalk their own. Who stay the path. You're certain to face more of them. Just remember. No kinship with their elk remains. Their madness precludes it. Don't let your emotions stay your blade. You're a hunter of fingers. That's cool. I want to be his friend. What a cool voice. Be on your way. Perhaps we will meet again. If fate permits. God, the, the character designs in in of the NPCs in this game as well is so so good. Be on your way. Perhaps we will meet again. Okay, so he's a hunter of fingers, the bloody fingers, necessarily. Actually, we got a new gesture as well, didn't we? So I've got so many cool gestures already. I just I I don't want to just. I need more room. Oh, fucking hell! What the hell is that? Ugh. Oh. Oh god. Oh, there's another one. They're susceptible to bleeding. God, oh, there's a ribcage in there. God, you mind letting me switch my gestures, please? Sheesh. All right, what did we just get? We got <laughs> we got the grovel for mercy. We've got dozing cross-legged. I might change that one from rest. Instead of rest, let's have dozing cross-legged. Perfect. Instead of dejection and sitting sideways. There we go. We can sleep cross-legged. Similar to how that guy's sitting. Grovel for mercy. Can we switch? 
Switch to Grovel for Mercy. I wonder if we can use this on an enemy and see what happens. <laughs> God. Poison balloon. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh, there's a few of them. Okay, they, they're coming back. He's coming back to life. I love that you can run and do the whistle at the same time. See ya. Oh, hang on, there's still... There's still stuff down there. Oh, oh, it's another one of these! Okay, it's another one of these statues. Um, oh, we got some bears. So, you examine this. Guide and gatekeeper for those returning to the roots, and it leads us somewhere. Again, there's still another one of these that we forgot to examine because we didn't know at the time that was around this way. That's what that marker's for. Leave markers on your maps, friends. There's one around here somewhere that we haven't... Uh, one of these. Because we discovered that we could examine them and it leads us somewhere too late. Alright. Should we go and hang out with the bears over here first? Hi, bears. Oh, you guys are guarding these lilies. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Gold tinged excrement. Love a bit of poop. Gold tinged poop. Oh! Fucking hell, the impact of those dragonflies sometimes is bigger than other enemies. Like, they hit you fucking hard. The sound effect is, like, deafening when they hit you. And then they just spin around you for ages. God, they're so annoying. <laughs> they're more of a threat than the bears are. Uh, the holding down charge attack is so cool. Jump. Oh, we got some... we got a hut. Around here, we've got some houses. A lot of poop to pick up around here. Gotta pick up the, the bear poop. Ah, oh, hang on, this is the artist's shack. Okay. We've been here before, that's fine. God, I'm so happy that there's a map in this game. Like, I know what I would do without it. You need it. Makes me re really wish that, like, you could get, like, cool maps for Dark Souls games and Bloodborne and Sekiro, like Sekiro, Sekiro has a map, which is which is cool. Sekiro has one. Okay, that's the third church, right? That's the third church, America, over there. Yes. Okay. In that case, let's go and jump down to where this dungeon is. This has been such a nice exploration episode. This makes me so happy. Because that's the thing, you just go, okay, well, we're going to choose to just explore Limgrave this time and we'll see what we can find, you know what I mean? <laughs> Instead of being like, okay, we're going to head to the big major location and see what, you know, what's going to happen. Because that, when you do that, you obviously know you're going to find something and something's going to happen. But if you go off the beaten path, it's so much cooler to be like, what am I going to find? Oh, it's another one of those! It's another one of the, the pumpkin dudes. Okay, so there's more of those. And we can jump up and fight him. On the bridge. Okay. Whoa. Oh, it's a land octopus. Another land octopus. Okay. Oh, shit. That was a mistake. I didn't mean to jump down all that way, dude. <laughs> oh, where was the last side of grace that we even rested at? Alright, Milkwater Cave. Shit. Um, okay, we died there. Alright, 
That's right, that's easy enough to get back. The way out is this way. run down here. <laughs> we'll go get our lost grace. Uh, these were not here last time. Hello, jellyfish pals. That's new. Oh, our runes are up. Okay. Our runes didn't make it down the bottom. So up we go. There are our runes up there. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's something so cool about just like having our samurai on a horse, like just riding through the lands, like a mystical beast with our lone wanderer samurai. So cool. Okay, let's get down here slowly. Oh. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> Took some fall damage, but we're okay. Alright, I think where it was pointing to must be through here. Okay, Murkwater Catacombs. Alright, there's multiple catacombs. Multiple catacombs throughout the lands between. I love that. Okay, let's take a look. Please don't. Are we gonna be have? Are we gonna have more imps? Oh, look! There you go. Yep, more imps. And the and the statues on the wall, being those terrible enemies. This fucking thing. So it's funny because it's a watchdog. But when you look at it, I don't know, I think it's the big ears on the back that it, like, makes it look like almost like a cat. Like, a, and I don't know, the pose of it, it's it's cat, quite cat-like. To me, it's more of a watch cat, not a watch dog. <laughs> I see you in the corner there, you fuck. Come on. I'm trying to tell I'm trying to take in your environment. I feel like this is a trap, this thing in the wall, in the in the floor, so we're gonna avoid that. Root resin. Okay, what's this gonna do? Somewhere, a heavy door has opened. Okay, so same as last time, except we had to do... We had to do something else to open the heavy door in the previous catacombs. There it is. Okay, there's our door. Very easy. This is definitely a trap plate on the floor. Pretty, pretty easy to see that. Oh, blood loss. Okay. Almost tra stepped on the thing on the ground. Jesus. Alright, I'm actually curious now. Is it a trap? 
Yep. Yep, it is. There you go. Alright, that's all the confirmation you needed. I'm like, is it a trap? Yes, it is. Alright, this is the door that we've opened. Alright, is it going to be another one of these watchdog fights? I'm expecting a watchdog fight. Whoa. Grave Warden Duelist? Oh my god! That's... Okay. Look, it's another one of these... Roots... On the wall. Oh my god. Whoa! Holy shit, dude. Dude. Oh shit, stop doing that. Oh, he could crush my skull if he wanted to, but he doesn't. Oh shit, oh, uh, okay, shit. What are those weapons, man? Oh, shit. Alright, we're going to use our flask of wondrous physic. Okay, so it restored half of our health, and we've got a strength increase. <sighs> Holy fuck, we got a battle hammer. These dungeons are so sick. <laughs> oh my god. Grave Warden Duelist. Battle Hammer. Large Iron Warhammer designed for gladiatorial combat, used by duelists who were exiled from the Colosseum, weighty enough to crush armor and its wearer alike. Braggart's Roar. Declare your presence with a boastful roar. Raises attack power, defense, and stamina recovery speed. Oh shit, our strength went up to 26. Our str in having that wondrous physic increased our strength to 26. I can wield this hammer right now as a result. <laughs> I don't know how long we've got strength for, but that's Holy shit. Wow. Just testing it out, you know. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, I don't know how long we've got extra strength for, but wow. Alright, return to the entrance. So that flask really comes in handy when you need like a little bit of a boost. You need a little bit of a boost at the end. You get half your health and a strength boost of plus 10, I think. Because I think we're at strength 16. So it gives us 10 strength. That's pretty crazy. And now that we've returned to the entrance, I think our strength... Yeah, you know, we don't have that strength boost anymore. I mean, we can still wield it, but... Um, obviously, it just won't be as effective. That's so cool. This wondrous physic thing is awesome. Okay. Um, we've cleared out Murkwater Catacombs. So this whole Murkwater thing, there's a lot going on down here. That's awesome. I feel like that's the end of that tunnel. 
So in terms of... Let's go back to the Murkwater Cave now. We're going to travel back and we'll see if Patches has updated. So he's now got like a shop. Let's, let's go take a look. Yep, he's moved. Okay. Oh, and there's a chest. A new one. Hello. Well, nice of you to drop in finally. It's all a bit ad hoc, but I'm sure you'll find something. And welcome to Patches Emporium, where you won't need a refund because everything's top notch. <laughs> Patches Emporium. About the bandits. Yeah. I had those bandits make a clean break. Now they're all suppliers. And good ones at that. I mean, they don't understand a word I'm saying, but it hardly matters. We have a natural connection. <laughs> They're all foot soldiers, survivors of a defeated army, worked to the bone by their high and mighty lord, only to be thrown out with the rubbish. <sighs> it's the same old story everywhere I go. <sighs> to hell with it all. Wow. That chest. Hmm. Wondering what's inside the treasure chest. Well, it's a... Nothing too special. Just something I'm saving as thanks for a very valuable customer. But then again, it would fetch some spectacular coin. And besides, this valuable customer could be a long time coming. Huh? Everything is give and take. Give and take. All right, he's like being like, "Do you want to open it, or do you want to wait?" I don't know. He's. I feel like he's baiting us into opening that chest. We're gonna leave it for now. What has he got for us though? Fan daggers. Ooh, hello, lady butterfly. Gold pickled fowl foot boosts rune acquisition for a time. Oh, nice. Four-toed foot of a fowl, pickled in a golden medicinal solution. So we have a, a silver version, which is for item discovery at the moment. A set of five throwing knives bundled together, concealed weapon cherished by the raptor assassins. Each knife deals poultry damage, but the wide range makes it suitable for constraining enemies. Margaret's Shackle, a fetish bathed in golden magic. Shackles were used to bind the accursed people called the Omen, and these were once made to keep a particular Omen under strictest confinement. Though faint, the Shackles still retain vestiges of power, enough to trap the once bound Margot on Earth, if only for a short time. Briefly binds Margot, once imprisoned, to Earth. As in, like, not Earth, as in, like, planet Earth, but as in the ground Earth. Is... Okay, I'm assuming this is useless for us to buy now, because we've already defeated Margot, but in battle, if you use this item, it will stop him from being able to, like, jump in the air and, like, do his attacks and stuff? It says once imprisoned, though. I don't know if that's useful for us to buy now. That'd be a waste of 5,000 runes. A grace mimic. Light shows the path, but without order. A fetish indicating the guidance of grace. A craftable item. Similar to grace, this fetish draws rays, guiding the way only without any sense of order. Useful as a last resort for those who have lost their way. Or for use by those who believe that unrefined guidance will lead to truer encounters. That one's quite interesting. So using that, it'll lead you somewhere, I think. Let's, uh, let's buy a few. That might be, that might be interesting. It might lead us off the beaten path somewhere. Cool. A glass shard covered in dirt. Because it sparkles in the light, it might be mistaken for an object of value when seen from afar. It cannot produce light by itself, essentially worthless. A parrying dagger. Oh, it's a dagger with the parry ability. 
A knife with curved handguards. Yes, okay. So if we wield that and use its skill, we can parry one-handed, like with a dagger without a shield. That's cool. Um, for masters of combat who anticipate every enemy strike and counter accordingly, this weapon is all they need. Yeah, I wish there was like a, a way that you could like block and like and do Sekiro combat. Oh man, I just love Sekiro combat so much. Uh, Missionaries cookbook number two. We can now make gold pickled fowl foots as well as grace mimics and script stones. A record of crafting techniques left by a man who unable to become a finger maiden instead became a missionary. Okay, we'll buy that. He has a stone sword key which costs 5,000. They're quite expensive, these ones. These are just like the um, Pharos lock stones, essentially, from Dark Souls 2. I feel like there's a lot, like there's identity and stuff from every single From Software game, and I've already mentioned this, but to see some Dark Souls 2 elements come in as well is really cool. A festering bloody finger. Attempts an invasion of another player's world. If successful, you will arrive as an invader, a bloody finger, which is like that dude um, that I forgot to write his name down because we killed him, that Yura went after. With the objective of defeating the host of fingers of that world, this furled finger is blackened with blood congestion. It seems to have been chopped off rather unceremoniously. Great arrows, a, a ballista bolt, horse crest, wooden shield, no skill. And a sacrificial twig, a talisman fashioned from a dried twig so slender that it might snap at the slightest touch. Prevents rune loss upon death, but will be lost itself in exchange. Believed to be a twig pruned from the Erd tree long, long ago. Okay, so this is our talisman of sacrifice, if you will. Interesting. Cool. Cheers for that! Cheers for that! Mm. I'm not going to do it. Actually, you know what? I bet you, I bet you this is a teleporting chest. 100%. That would be such a patches thing. That's a, it's got to be a trap chest for a very special customer. It just, it just feels like it would be exactly that. You know what I mean? He'll just, he'll just, uh, transport us somewhere. <laughs> somewhere we have no idea where. Damn. Okay, we have more to explore today. Um, we should do. We should help out. What's his name? Kenneth Height. See, put your markers down. Write things down because I forgot all about it until I saw this and I went, "Oh right, that other thing." It's so easy to get distracted here. It's insanely easy to get distracted here. That, honestly, writing things down and leaving markers on the map really just helps to jog. I mean, my memory can be pretty bad sometimes. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's terrible. Um, but, like, it's helping me uh, tremendously, I think. I wonder if um, our, uh, our master here of sorcery, who we haven't engaged with at all, has any updates for us. Young apprentice, first things first. You are a tadpole when it comes to magic. Infantile. Without the legs to walk. Roasted. So, to become a sorcerer, first, you must face your ignorance. Now, shall we start learning? Okay. <laughs> you are a tadpole, you useless thing. I don't have anything that I can learn from you, though, and we're certainly not doing sorcery. So, let's proceed. Or a giant flower, right? Or have we defeated it so it's no longer here? Yeah, I think we're okay. Now... If we're looking for a fort... To the south of the Mistwood... We want to be looking this way. Let's look for a fort in the distance, I guess. Let's see what we can find. Oh, 
right ahead. That looks like our fort. Okay, so this is the another minor Erd tree. This is the Mistwood, and that's the fort. I almost marked it like perfectly. How about that? <laughs> I was like, ah, south of the Mistwood. I feel like it's here. It's this. It's there. But I, I marked it in the direction well enough. Um, how do I remove... Yeah, right, let's put it there. There you go. Oh, another one of these bad boys. Okay, so sometimes it'll just replenish your flask, but rarely you can also get an Ash of War, apparently. Alright, theory time. Can we jump into this mist and survive? Yes, you can. Okay, you can jump from a great height down there and it'll guide you down to the bottom. Awesome. For science, and it actually worked out this time. Oh, we're about to get attacked by wolves in the mistwood. We'll have to explore the Mistwood a bit more thoroughly itself. A wolf watching over the graves. While I loot it for runes. Our fort. Oh, there's a land octopus on the beach. The land octopus is remembering what it was like to swim, but alas, it can no longer swim, for it is a land octopus. A cursed, wretched creature. Turtleneck meat. I really hope in this game as well, because it is so open and so large and the, the amount of direction you go into, I'm really hoping that there is a lack of timed quests, like ones that like, oh, once you get to a certain point, you can no longer progress them kind of thing. And I feel like there's, there probably will be, it makes sense for there to be, but I really hope just because of the sheer scale and size of this game, that there are not yet those things, you know what I mean? I, uh, I really hope so, but I mean, we'll see. I'm also really curious as to what these are. I have a feeling... Because is there one on this map somewhere? I have a feeling that those things may possibly be tied to the map fragments that we need for everything. Because I was assuming here, I was like, oh, maybe the map fragment is in Castle Morn over here, but it might be there. Those might be those steels. So... Let's place a beacon here, and let's see if we are right. Let's see if this is a map fragment. Oh, hello. The Demi-Human's Wax Wrath. Now their mother's been taken. Where are you, Lord Kenneth, the knight bedeviled by blood? Well, we, we were just speaking to him. The knight bedeviled by blood as I stare at the fort. I pass in peace. I request... I request passage in peace. Alright, never mind. For that you will die! Then pay with your blood! Oh, there's the big one, naturally. Oh my god, the delay in strikes. 
and then there's no delay and strike. <laughs> Make up your mind. Okay. Read a message. Open for business. Oh, it's a merchant. Open for business. Does that mean there's a merchant nearby off the beaten path? Uh, I'm getting distracted now because now instead of wandering for that beacon, I'm looking to see if there's a merchant open for business. We just got to look for the for the mule. Yes, correct. All right. So it, when you're walking on a path, welcome, dear customer. Yeah. Yes, right this way, right this way. Nice. When you are looking on the road, you may see a message from a merchant pointing you to their business. Let me mark this on the map as a person. Oh, actually, yeah, a person. Person's probably the best way to mark it. I'm really kind of annoyed that you can only have a maximum of 100 markers. There should be a, just, just make it infinite. Let us mark whatever we want. <laughs> Welcome, valued customer. Come, trade in our wandering emporium. Please, buy something. I'm hungry. I've been hungry so long. Please. A nomadic merchant who just is desperate for food, but is also traveling. Does have some stuff. We'll look at. We'll buy some things. We've got. We've got runes. We're not in a rush to level up right now. Crafting techniques left by roaming nomad warriors. A beast. A beast lore pot, and an exalted flesh. By an armor who served the great general Radan. Exalted flesh. Do we want exalted flesh? I don't even know the purpose of that right now. Maybe. Riveted wooden shield. A blue gold kite shield. The design represents the Erd Tree foreground against a blue sky. And it has a parry skill. Um, it has 100 physical damage negation and parry. Therefore, it's kind of better than my Brass Shield right now. Because my Brass Shield does not have the parry ability. Um, I, might, I might buy that. I'm going to take your blue gold kite shield. Saint Trina's Arrow. A withered water lily afflicts targets with a powerful sleep effect. Sleep arrows. Priests of St. Trina use these arrows to spread their teaching. The sweet oblivion of sleep can become quite the habit. That's quite cool. Sleep arrows. I'm going to take... I'm going to get those. I've never really bought much from merchants in previous From games. You buy some things, but not a whole lot. And Sekiro and Elden Ring so far have been ones where it's been really nice to like get unique items from different merchants. But what I love about this is, I don't know, there's just something magical about the characterization of these merchants. You're walking around, he's like, please buy something. Like, I need, I need some food. And they have like, I don't know, there's such like a, we're just wandering the land and it's just like this really cool feeling to be like, to look at these like unique items and go, you know what, I will, I will pick that up. Uh, we have, like, this merchant sells infinite arrows, you know, I'll get a few of those as well because I want to use my, I want to use my longbow a bit more. So let's get like 30 arrows while we're here. Just while, like, while we're on our way, you know. Lump of flesh. No, thank you. Bee sliver, sliver of meat. Mate, you've got meat. Why don't you eat it? <laughs> Why don't you cook it upon your fire? And this is our exceedingly rare to find Trina's Lily. Sells three of them. We've got a few, so I'm not in a rush to buy those. I think we'll be okay. We've bought some stuff for you. So hopefully that's good, sir. Was that nice? Ah. Hello. How nice of you to stop by again, please. Buy something, won't you? Okay. We can't talk to him, so... Um... Yeah, let's have a look at this shield. So it's like, it's only a little bit less, but it's also a lighter shield. Oh, actually, our brass shield has decent... <laughs> also, attributes require only 12 strength. We got up to 16 strength for this. Um, it's got a little less stuff, actually. I almost feel like the trade-off is not worth it. It's right, we live and we learn. I'll keep it for now. But I'm actually going to keep my brass shield equipped. 
I don't mind not having the parry skill, because I can always put it on when I find that Ash of War. And I quite like having my unsheath ability still available to me while I have a shield out. So we'll leave that for now. But we've marked our merchant on the map. However, it is a traveling merchant. Uh, so they may move. <laughs> Um, but we'll keep we'll keep the marker on it just in case and I guess we'll get confirmation at that at some point so it might be a good idea when you're traveling through these areas to stick to the road because it seems that there is an effort made in this game to draw your attention to things off the road by being you know draw your attention off the road by being on the road you know the Mistwood Ruins. <gasps> oh, hello. Oh, hi. That is a big bear. Hello. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. Okay. I've already defeated one of these before, in a cave. So, this is nothing. This one's not a boss, though. Oh, fuck. It's, it hits like a boss, though. Can it crush the ruins? Yep. Oh, mm? Can it crush the ruins, or is it trapped in there? Holy shit. I can't, I can't see. I cannot fu- I cannot fucking see. Oh shit! I got stuck! Because there's also a way down. Prey slaughtered. Beast blood. We got some beast blood. We need to get we need to get used to this as well. The stuff where it's like inflicting fire damage and scarlet rot. These are really interesting. I'll try and make use of those at some point. If I remember. Beast blood. Glinting with gold, material used for crafting items. It never rots or decays. There you go. Why buy Trina's Lily when you can obtain it from the lair of a giant bear? And we have a... Aha! Oh god, I'm scared. Is there any way you reckon that there's like a hint whether it's a trap chest or not? Smithing stone too. Nice. Dude, traveling the mist woods at night. How cool is this? The atmosphere of this game is just fucking incredible. Like... Where is the howling coming from? Is the howling even coming from anywhere? Or is it... It's a ghost wolf. Let's go down here. atmosphere of this game is flaw is flawless. It is absolutely flawless. Okay, so there are different looking chests, like different types of them. Okay. The tension. <laughs> the tension between me and a chest before opening it. Uh, we've got an axe talisman. I'm assuming increase... enhances charge attacks. 
The Lord who led the Long March bore an axe and his loyal warriors honoured him by wielding axes of their own, making them very effective at dealing decisive blows. So charge attacks. So not necessarily like enhances axe attacks, but if... Like that's, that's a charge attack, is it? I mean it's a thrust, but you're charging it. Or is it meaning attacks that you do while you're charging? Potentially. That might be what that is. Alright, let's head to this beacon. See, isn't it cool where it's like, we're about to go into the fort, but then we're like, oh, let's just, we'll just head back. And we'll see if this is, you know, a map. And then while you're on your way, you end up discovering just so many more things on the road ahead. You know what I mean? Like, god damn, dude. Ash of War Ground Slam. There you go, we got a ground, another Ash of War. Ground slam. Jump up high into the air and crash down on the ground ahead with your fucking big ass. The resulting pratfall sends a powerful shockwave in all directions, usable on all melee armaments. So you can do uh, Executioner Smo's ground pound. Okay, so I think the Ash of War scarabs must be the color that is like, I guess, neutral, because this one's red, so this will give us a new flask. Oh shit, it's a minor Erd tree. It's a minor Erd tree. Is there going to be another one of those guardians, like the one down south? A spike cracked tear and a green spill crystal tear. Okay, let's have a look. Enhances charged attacks for a time. Can be mixed in the flask. Increase the power of charged attacks. Green spill crystal tear. Can be mixed in the flask. In temporarily raises stamina. Oh shit, yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. And there's another one of these. So there's a bunch of these scarabs around the uh around the Erd tree. I was wondering if there was gonna be I was wondering if there was gonna be a boss. There might be still. I'm gonna leave these alone because we, we're already at max flasks, so we'll leave them be. There's just a bunch of them just hanging out at the tree base. Okay. Just a collection of them at this tree. Not a not a boss or anything. Again though, maybe this could be something that changes in the daytime because you know, maybe it's different. Who knows? Okay, this isn't this isn't ob Oh hello, it's another bear. Alright, hang on. There is something here. Marked on the map. Yeah, I think this is our I think this is our map steel. <laughs> yep, map of Limgrave East. Alright. Cool. Okay, we finally found our second map. So it is those things marked on the map. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's another one of those. Oh, whenever we get a map, there's so many cool things. I think these must represent caves because there's one here somewhere. Hang on. There's another one. Like there. I think they represent caves. These maps are so incredibly detailed. There's another minor Erd tree over there. Cool, so if we want to find a map in any section, we just have to go to those things. So it's already marked out for us, which is actually quite nice. There's the other map. We don't know where else the maps are at this point. Good to know. Good, good to know. Okay. That's the church. Look at that, the land of rot is over there. So that's the land of land of bloodborne. This bear though. You mind if I pick up this item? Nice, thank you. Nomadic Warriors Cookbook. What did we unlock? This is the fourth one. Fetid pod and roped fetid pod. Okay. 
We successfully stealthed him. Ooh. It's another one of these. Okay. So this is something that we saw while we were down south in a previous episode as well. So if we... Oh, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Okay. You want to fight then? We can fight. You're susceptible to bleeding, guys. Come on. Don't don't attack me. I'll, I'll get you. I'm the wandering samurai of the Mistwood. So we examine this and a little glowing... Oh, no? We can't examine it. Interesting. We've encountered one of these before down south. Oh god, hello. And it led us to a dungeon. But perhaps maybe we've already found the secret that it was that it was holding and therefore you there's no point in examining it. That's my only thought process is if I can't interact with this right now, we may have already found the secret that it was leading us to. Doesn't seem like a bad idea, especially considering we're going through the mistwood backwards right now essentially. So we started at the fort and we've gone through them. It might have been related to that bear guarding the uh, the chest, even though that wasn't necessarily a dungeon. I don't know, man. There's something about beaches in From Software games that have me scarred. <laughs> I don't want to accidentally come across a fucking orphan. Cos, or some say Cosm. A beach is a beach, even in Elden Ring, dude, you know? Oh wait, I didn't even acknowledge this thing, hello. We've got a huge... Oh, hang on, what's this? Siofra River Well. This game is just a, like, a, like a huge collection of, ooh, what's this? Where's that? You know, what can I interact with that off in the distance? You know, that's like it's just so crazy. This is quite deep. Siofra River. Oh, and we are underground, so the map is darkened. Oh, show above ground, show underground. Not only is there a whole map that is already massive enough with all of its verticality and, and depth, but there is also, <laughs> there is also an underground. I'm going to do stamina and strength because strength is going to give us more damage with our weapon anyway, plus 10 strength temporarily. And we've already got flasks, so we'll focus on a strength and stamina boost. This game is just this. Okay, so you do underground and then it shows you the the points to travel underground. The river well depths. I 
I'm really happy that like once the game, once you do, because the game kind of wants you to do Stormvale first, and a lot of people have actively avoided it to explore. But it, what I think is a quite natural feeling now is once you've done Stormvale to the point that you've defeated uh, Godric and got your first Great Rune, is the the world then opens up in terms of oh now you can go to these different locations um, to get more Great Runes, but now you also can just go and explore like we went so far underground to the point where it's like there's just ruins built underground melted mushroom so this is underneath a minor erd tree this place a river everything is just the names of everything in this game i just love that And the music in this game is something else, too. This feeling of exploration in an open world game is absolutely unparalleled. And I think the main reason for that is because this is a world that is not filled with optional quest markers and side quests and collectibles. And here's all you open a map and it's just icons everywhere, which is the like the overwhelming terrible thing about uh, a world map on an open world game is it like ah it just like overwhelms you when i first tried to play the witcher 3 in 2015 i looked at that map with all of those question marks and i was like i'm working full time and i can't do this you know like and that's the witcher 3 and that's not a bad game but it's like it's that effect that a map can have on you and the fact that how Elden Ring changes the open world formula in a fact where it's like, here's your open world that you can explore, but you don't have to do it. We're not going to obligate you. We're not going to stress you out with objectives everywhere. Find what you will. Find what you can. Do what you will. You know, you have a main quest. The side quest is whatever you make of it. It's not, here's all your objective markers. Get these to do this, to do this, to do this, you know? And it doesn't force you on side quests to progress the main quest either. It gets rid of the shitty things in open world formula and it is reinventing it. And I hope more open world related games and developers take a note out of what this game does for exploration. Because... The fact that nothing is marked on the map, the fact you even have to discover map fragments yourself, um, the fact that the game doesn't even reveal to you that there's an underground until you just end up there, um, the sense of exploration in this game is, is second to none in an open world setting. And it is, it is blowing my mind, and it is, it is so good. And the map, the fact that there is a map, doesn't take away from that. In fact, it only elevates the experience because the, the world is so massive that you need... Uh, a map to make your own markers to leave your own notes you know what I mean instead of the game just overwhelming you and bombarding you uh, with notes you leave them yourself the, the color palette of this area mixed with like the, the the warm tones of the flames and the and the lighting like the purple lighting is just gorgeous A Dukist herb. Dukist herber. Imagine if like things in the environment reacted to your fire and it just like lit this lit this area up like permanently, you, like light the campfire. Bonfire lit. That's one of those things uh in Breath of the Wild that I really loved that really surprised me. Because um, there's a lot of the time where you play a video game and you go, can I do this? I wonder if I can do this. Probably not. It is a video game. And then it blows your mind and you can do that. Half-Life 2 is a game that I'm playing right now that is really giving me that same sense of excitement and wonder. And it's and it's amazing. But Breath of the Wild did this as well. When I was like holding a torch and I was like, oh, can I do this? And you can. Like you, you cook apples in the tree above you and they fall down while you like walk over it with... Uh, um, with a torch. There's just things in the environment that react to, to you in a way that I, I wouldn't expect. Um, and it's just like things like that that really sell the world that you that you live in and that you that you play a game in. It makes you want to stay in and get completely, completely lost. 
think we've found our first enemies of this location. Oh, they're more, they're more of these dudes. Like these crystal miners, except these guys look a little different, I think. They look a little different. Instead of being more, like, crystallized and rocky, they look... I don't know. They're super strong, though. Super strong. But they're, they're damage resistant anyway, I think, which is the nature of their skin. Which I think, if we change weapon to something that's a little more blunt, like a hammer, which we can't actually wield, Unless we use this flask. Let's use the flask. Alright, now we've got more strength. Oh no, we still can't use this hammer. Oh, hang on. Wrong wrong hammer then. Hold on. Let me... This hammer. Okay. It's a heavy hammer, dude. That is a heavy hammer. What's our equi equip load right now? 44 out of 60.9. Alright, there we go. We're back to medium load. There we go. We just took the shield off, so now we can do this. Oh, <laughs> I charged through, missed everyone, and got stabbed in the back. Okay, I tried to I tried to experiment there and see what would happen <laughs> by mixing with things. This game also makes me want to do that a lot more. That I you know sometimes I just I kind of you get stuck with um, a particular play style and how you wanna how you wanna play and do things and like. This one is encouraging me to try and do something a, a little different. I don't feel like this is worth it to attack these guys this way. I might just try and circumvent them instead. Because there's a lot of them, and they are quite tough. There's, there are There is a lot of them, so I might just leave that one be, to be honest with you. We'll go back on our on our way up this way onto I guess what would be considered maybe the main path of this area up here towards the light. Oh shit! Okay, there's more of them. All right, this is like their area then. Um, looks like we're gonna run through here and avoid enemies <laughs> to really take in this area. They're strong. Smithing stone for. Oh, you. Yeah. I did not expect to still be able to get hit there. I mean, like, they're, they're, you can kill them. Like, they're not impossible, but they they hit pretty hard and they've got a lot of health. Ugh. And they don't necessarily stagger either. Oh! Oh! He pulled me in! He pulled me in, I did not expect that. thought that one would have hit me there. Oh! Okay, even if the main attack hits you, uh, even if the main attack misses you, when he pulls back, that can still get you. Interesting. They're very susceptible to getting probed, at least. <laughs> very susceptible 
to the old backstab. Thank you. They do not give you many runes in return either. Good thing that they're slow, so you can kind of just ignore them, I feel. Smithing stones. Look at this statue. Look at what is under this robe. Are those like, are those tentacles? Are those tentacles? Golden centipede. Oh, let's have a read of the golden centipede. The golden desiccated remains of a centipede. Kept as a fetish by golden order fundamentalists, especially the hunters of those who live in death. As such, they're found near churches and similar. So it looks like we need to jump on that statue from above. They're found in churches and similar. So this could potentially be an underground place of worship. I don't know how the enemies of this area tie into that, however. But there is a lot of them. Oh shit. Whoa shit. Whoa shit. What is that? Okay. You've got a bubble. Immunizing cured me. Okay, you... Rainbow stone. Okay, they've got bubbles. They've got the power of bubbles. Let's avoid that. Whoa, and then the whole atmosphere is just completely changed with this place. Look at this. So those are just those are just the ruins. This is something else. Hello. Look at this water feature. Look over there. Please tell me there's a secret behind the waterfall. It's all I want in life. Okay, this will take us up. Hold on. Like, you know what would be a cool feature if you did this? If you took the torch into the waterfall and then the, the torch stopped working? Illusory wall behind the waterfall. Damn it. Do you guys think there's illusory walls in this game? I don't know if anyone's found any, but it really doesn't feel like it. I mean, we haven't tried in a while, but still. I'll have a look at the description of soap in a second. Shall we investigate the description of soap? What is soap? What does it mean to be soaped? Is it to be clean, or is it to have your mouth washed out with the sustenance? Removes filth and accumulations on the body. It's literally soap. A plant-based soap made from mushroom juice. Cleans off filth and other accumulations on the body while also slightly reducing poison buildup. Filth covering the exterior eventually seeps inside, soiling one's very spirit. Could that, like, cleanse us of poison then? Who knows? Let's go up this lift. Magic lift. This is so beautiful, man. This is so beautiful. Where is this taking us? Oh, wow. Interestingly enough, like, there's a tree there. Like, that's a tree that's been cut down as well that's down here. And more trees. So we have... Oh my god. We have the scenario that there is apparently a city in the sky. We also now have uh, underground cities. With also tree growth down here. There's like, it's like the world, like worlds stacked on top of each other. Like, different realms. Like, it, we're, we're underground in the lands between, yes. But are we... Um, 
un under the lands between, or does it take us to maybe a different plane? Do we do we enter a different sort of location, in a sense? Like, because when we look up, when we when we can't look up. I don't have much control, unfortunately, but when you look up, like, it almost looks like a sky of its own, in a sense, you know what I mean? Preserving boluses. Allows scarlet rot buildup, alleviates scarlet rot buildup, and cures rot. Okay, we've got our first item that cures rot. Scarlet rot accumulates gradually, coming into effect... Once the threshold is reached, Scarlet Rot Ailment greatly lowers HP in steady increments for a period. Oh, we've got dragonflies down here. Nothing stops dragonflies from existing, huh? Oh no, nothing stops giant crabs from existing either! Are you gonna... What, what's going on with the... Ah, oh, you're the small... you're small crabs. Okay. Small crabs and large crab. God damn it, crabs. You know what's so cool? Stealth. Crab eggs. You know what's great in this game? Stealth. Thank you so much from software for adding a crouch and a jump into a Dark Souls sort of gameplay setting. You know, those are some good things to come over from Sekiro. And I'm like, the more that I have thought about it as well, and when I finished the game, is I was so happy that I managed to play uh, Sekiro before um, before this game. That really made things a lot better for me, I feel, to be able to get that one under my belt before we went into this. Because it definitely gave me another perspective on From Software's like gameplay experience. Look at this. It literally is like a night sky. It does look like there is a ceiling to it, like all of the rocks there, but it just gives you that feeling of a night sky. And look at that. All of this is underneath us in the lands between. And it's just these moments where it's like, we're now underground. We're now in a completely different area. We're at the uh, Siofra Riverbank. And it's just these moments where you go, man, all of you guys probably have like either similar or completely different journeys to what I've experienced right now of me ending up down here. And I just think that's absolutely amazing. I love this game so, so much. It is very impressive, very beautiful, um, and I am very pleased with it so thank you so much for watching this episode of elden ring we will bring it to a close today as we've arrived at the riverbank next time look at these animals over there and everything next time we're going to explore this area in the riverbank um and see what it's like before moving on and exploring elsewhere we'll see how distracted we get how lost we get and as usual the the absolute wonders of this world pulling us in any and all directions so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.